What is up, everybody? Welcome back. Happy Friday. Hello, John Garcia, Hardcore Keem here with Mr. Tanner Wayne of In Flames. How you doing, my friend? Let's go! Let's fucking um, go. As good as, as good as you can be when you just had a fresh waffle and a leg massage, foot massage. That sounds nice. amazing. That sounds great. That sounds great. <laughs> Better than my Friday for sure. Keem, how you doing, man? It's been a little bit. It's been what since what November? Mm, right. Yeah, I think so. I'm still here. Let's go, baby. Let's fucking do it today, <laughs> everybody. Hey, if you haven't been on the stream before or been on this channel, welcome. It's nice to see you. My name is John Garcia. Uh, you can see the little Stay Puff name tag right here down at the screen. Uh, today, we're going to be listening to the brand new album from In Flames, Forgone, that came out motherfucking today. And we're going to be listening to it with Mr. Tanner Wayne, who uh, played some skins, played some beats, played some drums on the album. Yeah, I did. <laughs> that is a fact. That is a true fact. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, I say let's just go ahead and get into it, my friends, because uh, why wait? We're already a little bit behind. So, my friends, this is the beginning of all things. Track number one for Foregone from In Flames. So Tanner, I know that you've been around the In Flames camp for a little bit, and this is going to be your first album that I believe that you've you've drummed on, correct, for them? In full, yeah, I did um, two songs on the last record, um, and I did the re-release of Clayman, but in terms of a record, this is it. Hell yeah. What's been your experience so far with uh, uh, hanging out with the In Flames camp? I mean, it's chill, man. You know, like... If you've lasted this long in the industry, there's a reason, you know, and um, it's really chill, you know. We um, we all got, get along really well, and um, touring, it's, just, it's all really chill and no drama, no, you know, kick it, listen to good music, eat food. Hell yeah. Pretty relaxed, you know what I mean? It's all just about having fun and not making anything too serious. Which I think is important, and I feel, I don't know, from my perspective, I feel like artists always put out great music or, like, better stuff that way when they don't have to worry about, you know, the infighting or whatever else is going on or anything. You just, like, focus on the music and have a good time. Yeah, and especially live, you know, like, people, understandably so, like, um, put a ton of pressure on their live show, every show, and they talk about, you should have done that differently, and, like, we got to... We just go out and make sure that we have fun, you know, even in front of a hundred thousand people, we'll be joking with each other and doing stupid shit. It's all just about, let's just enjoy this shit, you know? Oh yeah. Instead of, you know, going up and doing these like insane tough guy speeches and like, which like is sick too. I live for that shit. You know what I mean? But like for us, it's just kind of a, you're just hanging with us. You know what I mean? And I think it, the, the crowd can kind of sense that we're up there having fun and then they can have fun. It's just more of a light metal vibe than than what's typical you know yeah which is like the whole idea with going to a show right you want to have fun you want to express yourself you want to get out there and just have a good time although i think keem knows a thing or two about tough guy speeches oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah it definitely yeah but that's that's what it's all about um i went on my first tour last year so and we just have fun like it's it's all that all the internal stuff like i could see how some bands do the internal monologue but it's like come on you you had to you had to play you had to put on a show just just have fun don't that bs leave that to the birds man yep get things started so this is the first song this is the first song we did um yeah they they pretty much i had i think i learned this on the way from san diego to la and um I just went psychotic on it, and um, the without being weird about the story, we just forgot to edit the drums. We forgot to like trim the fat and like make it a little more digestible. So this, it's like the craziest drum song because we just left everything in. Oh yeah, that's on it. accident. <laughs> hey, if you had never have told me that, and that's why I love this show, Tanner, because if you had never have told me that, I would never have known. No one would. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we were packing the drums up on the edit day, and once when we were packing, they're like, "Yo, we forgot to do State of Slow Decay," and I'm like, 
Like I was done. I was so burnt. I was like, let's fucking, I'm, I'm done. And we packed mm. up and I was like, holy fucking shit. They forgot to edit the craziest drum song of all. So now it's insane. So it's sick, whatever. Do you have to then you gotta play a lot. change your way <laughs> that you play this from now on then? No, thankfully it's all, I call it like drum tricks. I'm using mm. like a bunch of weird double kick shit to make it. I can play the song. It's really easy. There's a lot of cheater stuff in it. <laughs> Again, would have never have known. Sounds impressive right. as shit to me. Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> magic shit. You know, I could just sit there and go like this for fucking four hours, and you'd think I'm doing something crazy, but I'm just using cheater shit. <laughs> <laughs> Look, work, work harder, not uh, work, work smarter, not harder. This is the definition yeah. of a song where you're not working as hard as it sounds. Uh, do you remember Keem or Tanner? This was the first single that was announced, yeah? It was... Yeah. Because I couldn't remember if it was this one or Great Deceiver, but it, like, it came out of nowhere. I think I was in... Where was I? I think I was in, like, London or somewhere. It just, like, popped in. I was like, oh, there's a new Fla In Flame song. All right, put this in. I was like, what the fuck? Holy shit! Yeah, in terms of a first one, it was a good fucking... <laughs> yeah. yeah. A really good way to get the, uh... Um, get the excitement back up because you know like like you said right in flames has been around for a really long time they're obviously doing something right they've got their fans that have been baked in for you know decades they've got they've picked up new fans along the way but i feel like when this song came out it was like clarion call to anyone who has or has ever liked in flames here you go yeah and especially since i'm less involved in the what the fans are saying and uh, you know i've I'm in, I'm in such a small blip of this band's yeah. um, a, as a whole. So when it comes, you know, I know that the last couple records, people are like, oh, you know, it's softer, it's different, whatever. So it's for me, it's like, it's a it's a treat to be a part of, um, in full of one that's like just fucking slamming, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 100%. And I remember, like, I'm not going to sit here and say that I loved every single song from I, The Mask, or anything like that, right? But... I remember hearing about what people were saying about it and then going to listen to it myself and was like, why are so people so down on this record? I don't like, I don't, I've heard worse records earlier this year, just two days ago than this one. I don't know. There's like a lot of really good stuff on it. If you like in flames, let's fucking go Keem. Yeah. Um, yeah, again, I, I'm not affected by the shit. It, for me, as cheesy as it is, as a sentiment, like, it's all pieces of art. Yeah. And it's all something that, you know, Anders and Bjorn have created. So I always think it's hilarious where people are like, oh, do you all stuff? Like, dude, right. the metal community is so weird with that shit. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, and, and that's fine, you know what I mean? The more you tell me that kind of shit, the less of, um, like, a very, I don't know how to say it without being disrespectful. Like, at the, the more you're fuck this record blah 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 you're not understanding what music is supposed to be in whole anyways you know what i mean 100 like, percent. everyone's allowed to like what they like but there's no better than this it's all your personal it's all it's all um yeah it's all personal journey with your music listening um but again i'm, I'm just stoked that this record is incredible start to finish you know yeah, and I think, uh, uh, Keem, I think you can probably agree with this. I don't know, at least for me, as far as being in a digital space and stuff like that. Um, again, I'm not going to be here and say, like, oh, I like everything or have to put a positive spin on everything. But, you know, yeah. I'm not going to shit on a band just because they release something that, like, oh, I don't like, or, like, they release an album that I don't like anymore. They suck. They're, no, they're dead to me, whatever. Because, like, <sighs> especially if you love a band, like, okay, cool, well, if you didn't like this one, well, then they're going to come out with something later, and, like, that's the whole point. I feel like, and, you know, we, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir here, Tanner, but it's like, I want my artists and my musicians to grow and change and find things that are different. And, yeah, there are certain bands that they have their sound, and they can do a variation on that sound for four or five records, and it sounds great, and I love every single one of them. But, like, I love seeing bands grow and evolve and try different stuff. Or, like, with, in, in Flames' case, right, They've gone and done their thing over the last couple of years, 
and you know people oh why why are they not as good as before like I loved Horrible more or Colony more they should go back to this shit and like I feel like this record is a perfect encapsulation of like alright motherfuckers you people who wanted that shit here's this in but we also have all of the stuff that we've been doing over the last 5, 10, 15 years in there as well this is our this is who we are as a band in this point in time in 2020 I guess 2022 but you know 2023 we say it all the time and like if, if there was 10 colonies if, ever, if let's say colony is your favorite and we just and they just kept releasing a different version of colony you wouldn't like it yeah fuck off with yeah. that shit. You know what I mean? it's true right. and colony is my yeah. favorite record man like i get it <laughs> yeah and it's, I, it's a, it's I don't a yeah i don't want to hear you know there's some bands that i love and I won't like their newest record as much because it's a reiteration. It's the same kind of thing that they've been doing. Um, but yeah, man, like I always compare art to food and shit. Like what you like. Yep. Gives a fuck. There's, yeah, no, there's no better than it's all each person's own shit. You're allowed to like and, you know, it doesn't just enjoy the shit. Man. And not even that, but like it's OK to not like something. It's OK to hate something, right? Like it's OK to just like if you don't know, like this really this album really makes me angry or whatever it is. But it's just like I have no time to like spend time and brain cells on stuff that I don't like versus the stuff that I do like, you know what I mean? And that's the thing that gets me when it's like people spending a lot of effort shitting on stuff that other people have done when it's like, well, you don't have to listen to that. You don't have to do that. You can just listen to the stuff that you like and put effort into spreading the gospel of the shit that you do like. So, yep, this is uh, this is my favorite. Oh, yeah. So I listen. I gave this a cursory listen to this this morning while I spent all day trying to change a radiator. Hasn't fully happened yet. Um, but this is really the first like actual sit down headphones listen I've had with this album so far. Sick. Why? Uh, why is this one your favorite? Just in full, you know, we've we've listened to the record a million times. Just in full, I think this is fucking it for me. Catchy, huge, catchy chorus. I love the verses. The bridge is fucking hard as fuck. Mm. Just like this is the one for, and for a lot of us, this is our favorite song. Me and me and Bryce this is probably our favorite. It's yeah. gonna be in the live set. <laughs> it has to, right, Tanner? This is in a live set, right? Um. Not that I know of, but I'm fucking down. <laughs> Not, no, I don't know. We don't, we, don't play for like another, we don't play for like another month. I don't know what's on the last. <laughs> you guys like come up with the set list, what? Like, two, two weeks before? Week before? Yeah, if we're lucky, yeah. <laughs> and Anders, our singer, comes up with it. Mm. Mm. Bye, everybody watching at home, watching online. Have any questions for Tanner, put them in the chat. Uh, we're keeping an eye on that. Don't be shy. That's what we're here for, hanging out, listening to music. Because I can't see it, can I guess how many people are watching? Sure. Oh, wait. No, I can't. You Is can? it three? Uh, it's more than that. Okay. Because <laughs> I, I see here, maybe that's just us. Yeah, yeah. I think that is. I think that is just us. I love how dynamic Andrews' voice has got over the last couple of years, you know? Like, being able to go from that low to this part right here, it's it's so underrated. Todd Edbleton says, hey, you from Australia. Hello from Nashville. Nice to see you, my friend. Nice. Welcome. What's up, Australia? We got big fights this weekend. Yeah. 
Chris Broderick, ladies and gentlemen. I was literally about to ask, what was it like working with him? I didn't. I didn't see him once. <laughs> well, that's, that's, yeah, there you go. I did all my shit by myself, and then Chris came in a couple days later or something like that. Is that uh, was that just a product of the times and the environment, or is that how uh, things have been going that way with the band for the last little bit? No, it's just kind of how the studio went, you know, like certain studio vibes, everyone's together. And it's like, that just wasn't when I was doing my drums, Bjorn was at back at the house making, um, making more songs. And Anders was at another house recording and it was just kind of all over the place. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, so Mr. Australia, Todd Embleton says, bro, listen to this yesterday, like nine times. Uh, speaking of the song we just listened to, he said that one bleeding out is my favorite. So there you go. You got, you got already got your fans already getting on that bandwagon also. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of people too, uh, have been saying bleeding out and the, the ballad quote unquote, and that's one of my favorites too. Fuck yeah. I uh, got a lot of people popping in here. Pepe Pelote from Norway says you killed it last December in Oslo. Uh, and then we've got hello from Brazil. Always Brazil repping. Love it. Bom dia, Brazil. Let's go. I love a good sneaky acoustic guitar for just a couple of seconds. Yo, thank you, Pepe. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, so Wings of Oasis has got a question for Tanner. Is there any unreleased songs on this new album? So how many songs ended up on the cutting room floor? Would you know? How many songs didn't make the record? Correct. Um, two. You'll hear them eventually. I believe that was probably gonna be the next question. Yeah, that's what's insane about this record. It's very deliberate. Like, just the song we wrote is on the album. It's not like mm. we demoed. There's no extra demos and shit. Trace the point. Yeah. 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 Which is, I mean, I don't know. I appreciate that. I think we, we talk about a lot, team, but like self editing is so hard, I think, for a band to do. So just be like, all right, here's all the stuff that we've got. It's, you know, 12 tracks, 45 minutes. Here you go. Get in, get out. Um, and I, I don't know, I, maybe that comes with the fact that uh, Anders and Bjorn have been working together for so long, you know, and able to just like, all right, we know what we're doing, we know what we want, here you go, boom. Yeah, I've, I've said it because Bjorn can't really say it, he's so in it that like, when it comes in flames, Bjorn is the fucking in flames machine, and like, there there isn't like a, oh, this sounds too much like this, and fuck, what if we do something like this? It's none of that. Yeah. It's down, fucking makes it, it's in flames, it's like... It's pretty insane. That's nice. Yeah. When you've done when you've done 14 records, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. like um, the song uh, uh which is my second favorite, probably. He wrote it the night before. Wow. Jesus Christ. <laughs> he wrote it. He wrote it. At, he wrote it at 11 p.m. and then at 11:30, I wrote my drum solo on my computer because I was worried I wouldn't be creative enough in the studio. I went at 10 a.m. I recorded the song, and that's the song. It's Holy like, shit! It's, it's, it's pretty deliberate. It just comes, boom, and it's just there. Yeah. No BS, yeah, straight to the point. Yeah, and it's like, it's no shot at anyone who can't do that. It's just in flames. It's very fucking specific, and it's very in a lane. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. There isn't a lot of experimentation. It's just 
like this is Bjorn's you're listening to 12 or however many songs of Bjorn's frame mm. and sometimes that happens too like I've heard songwriters talk from all different genres be like there's some songs that I've like painstakingly agonized over for months and then other songs that just came to me in 15 minutes so those are do 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 boom boom done and there you go yeah yeah that's for sure how it goes uh, Todd says, foregone, so Todd's getting back to the point that we made a little bit earlier, Tanner, saying uh, the vocals in Foregone Part 2 are amazing, um, and that uh, Anders has grown so much as, uh, <laughs> as a vocalist with his deep and his highs and everything like that. Yeah, for sure. I'm gonna feel self-conscious air drumming in front of an actual drummer because I can't play drums to save my fucking life. <laughs> <laughs> air drum it, bro. I'm gonna make a whole air band over here. Yeah, I, you, you can't see it, but I got my invisible harmonica up here too while I'm like doing the drums. Yeah, now I can see it. This is the only press I'm doing probably for the, I mean, for the whole weekend. So. Oh, hell yeah. It. Look at that. We're so special. That. And then you get a nice weekend off. Potentially. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what else you got going on, but probably a lot. Nope. <laughs> so album's out. Work uh, is done. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm going to go hang with a homie later and listen to the record. And then tomorrow is UFC day. I'm going to play that new Harry Potter video game. Oh, yeah. <coughs> And then um, Sunday is my mom's birthday in Super Bowl, so. You got a rooting, yeah. rooting interest in the Super Bowl, my friend? No. Who's, who's, who's playing? Who's playing? Oh. <laughs> the Chiefs are the Eagles. All right, let's see. Who's got a better sandwich? Uh, uh, oh, there you go. Oh, who's got better barbecue? Uh, oh, Kansas also, City all the way. Yeah. Who are you guys going for? I have no dog in this fight. Um, okay, team. I'm only. I, I gotta go with Kansas City. Uh, uh, please, my rival. I'm, I'm a New York fan. So I'm a yeah, fan. I choose. I choose the Chiefs. There, there you go. I just. I'm just in general. I'm not a fan of Philadelphia sports teams. Sorry to any Philadelphia sports teams fans in the audience who's listening. Whatever. Um, but I don't know. I was uh, one of my friends is a big Bengals fan. And I met her, my girlfriend and I went and met her and her boyfriend at uh, the Bengals bar in town to watch the Chiefs Bengals game. It was not a fun atmosphere after a little while. Just a lot of sad people. <laughs> a lot of sad people. <laughs> oh, the upset. <laughs> Uh, all right, everybody, we are on track seven. So we're, ha we're on the back half of the album now. This is Pure Light of Mind. Do you have any uh, thoughts, insights for us on this one, Tanner? I fucking love this song, you know, for for it to be what it is amongst the more chaotic songs. Mm -hmm. I fucking love this song. Um, it's cool that, to be in a band where the ballad type songs are almost the biggest sometimes. Yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. um, I forget what the song's called on Eye the Mask. Um, that one's huge. Um, the one on Battles is huge. So, yeah, it's it's cool because I don't, I'm not the type of dude that just play death metal all day long. So for like the, the, the softer songs to be this mighty and like this, you know, me like it this much is really fun. Makes it fun to play live and then go like straight to a fucking blast beat. Like it's a fun dynamic, you know? Yeah.
So let's see. Wings of Oasis says, you might have to fill in some background for us over here, Tanner. Uh, but Wings of Oasis says, I saw an interview with Anders. He said, Tanner is a racehorse. Let him run. What do you think about that, Tanner? I saw him. I saw that in print. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hyped that when it came to this record, I didn't know how it was going to go because I've never done a whole record with them. And um, they fucking left me alone. I did whatever the fuck I wanted on the entire record. Fuck yeah. Um, thankfully, I'm deep enough in my career to know now to know that I have to be tasteful. I have to like serve the song. It has to serve the legacy. It has to have an inflamed vibe. But I, without knocking any record or any drummer that they've ever had, I feel like this one stands on its own. Um, and again, because they allowed me to have so much creativity, um, I definitely tried to over-season the fuck out of it. And um, and then we went in on an editing day, we, tri we trimmed some shit, which I need. I need to be held back in a sense, because I don't know what the fuck's going on when I'm recording fucking a whole record in three days. Um, so for what it is, I'm like really appreciative that they let me show myself on it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hyped on it for sure. Yeah, that is because I feel like there uh, are a lot of bands who wouldn't do that, right? You know, just say, here, we're bringing a drummer in. This is what you're going to play. This is what you want to do. Here you go. And I know that you have, you know, worked with them for a few years and everything like that. But it's cool to see them just be like, all right, we know you. We trust you. Do your thing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, like you, like you said, it. there's a lot of situations where it'd be kind of risky to let that happen and you kind of want to watch it and kind of control it and it's, it's it's a lot of it is it's their record you know what i mean like they wrote it and we're able to be a part of it so um yeah i'm i'm hyped to be able to put some different different kind of shit on there we have another question in the chat uh dj actles what's up dactyls nice to see you my friend uh says tanner how do we the fans best support you the band um go stream it go buy a bundle with some vinyl um follow me on my page follow the band yeah just keep listening come out to a show mm. go out to a show buy a t-shirt all the good stuff physical copies yeah. always good hell yeah let's go i love this song tanner this song is so fucking good Want to hear the story behind this one? I would love to hear the story behind this one. So... This part is what it was, I think. And then the next part, it was the whole song was just double kick. <laughs> and uh, Anders didn't like it. They had a little conversation. They came back in the room and we changed the entire thing up on the spot. And here it is. Holy shit. Drum wise, we took all the, we deleted all the drums and I completely redid it. Not because of what I did, but it, was, it did double kick and half time and it changes the energy. So we changed the drums for the entire song and it turned into this. Yeah, it's almost like a, like no time signature almost it's like just like doom to cut and then it kind of moves around a little bit. And then the chorus was just, um, I think it was just double kick, and now it's a lot more punk beats, and it ended up being one of the first singles. Yeah, fuck yeah, let go to D-Beats, let's go! Yeah, there's so much musical diversity and like, just like, even band diversity, I guess, is like, as far as the sound goes with this. Um, I'm really glad that the band is in a really good spot right now and like there's goodwill towards them and people are digging this record. Just, just, you you yeah. just want to see it. You want to see bands that have been around for so long do well. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. I mean, it's rare that you're going to like the 14th record you know what I mean, of anyone. <laughs> yeah. Or that a 14th record even fucking exists. Yeah. 
you have any cities coming up that you have booked so far that you're like really stoked to get to? Well, I've been to Australia two or three times and I've been to Japan once, but I've never played it. I was um, drum teching either for Suicide Silence yeah. or um, Love My and Met. Mm. So the fact that I finally get to play these cities, I'm super hyped to do um, Australia with Slipknot and then fucking Tokyo with Slipknot. That's insane. That's, it's going to be yeah. insane. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I'm so we were hyped. just talking with a, a, another stream podcast thing that I do earlier this week uh, about the Japanese audiences and stuff like that. Uh, in uh, reference to like Megadeth doing a big stream over there and everything like that. It used to be, uh, at least when I was growing up, it felt like every single band had a live in Budokan or a live in Tokyo or a live in Japan uh, type of record. And just the the fans and the scene over there is incredible. And you guys are going to get so, so warm of a welcome, I imagine. Yeah, and they have a, they have a live in Tokyo, I, I believe, or a live in Japan. And... Um... Yeah, I mean, it's one of my favorite places in the world, so I'm hyped. Hell yeah. I've never been hoping to put it on the list one of these days. Yeah, you got to. Mm. Uh, Pepe wants to know, when did you start drumming, Tanner? When I was nine. Nine years old, my dad had a drum set. I started playing, and then my dad noticed that I had a lot of rhythm, so he threw me straight into um, drum lessons. Were you, uh, were you I was a, I was obsessed. fan of music first, or like did the drums just kind of come and then you found music after that? No, nah, I've been obsessed with music since I was a little, little guy. Mm. Uh, my parents love music, as do most humans, right? But like, yeah. that was such a thing, you know? Music, my dad's, my dad's a musician, he plays everything, and, mm. um, or every normal thing, bass, guitar, drums, mm. sings. Um, so yeah, music has just always been around. Both my grandparents are in like musical theater, and um, yeah, it just it was just always there. I'm surprised I didn't play sooner, honestly. Mm. This this one right here. Oh wait, there's some there's some solo on a part of that song that's just heavy as fuck. We, we still got about two minutes and 42 it. seconds left. It's coming up. Yeah. No, it already happened. Oh, did it? Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, Wings of Erasus says, In the Dark is my favorite on this album. Any stories behind this one? No. <laughs> I showed up, I played it, and then we went on to the next song. <laughs> no, yeah, this one cool song I, I i don't know i i didn't know and mind you i didn't know what the lyrics i didn't know what the vocals were going to be on any song pretty much like once i went and did the shit then i heard lyrics after and i was like oh fuck so it turned into a different thing you know do you um when you recorded this do you, did you have all the instruments and everything like that did you have the instruments there or were you just playing to a click um i think i had like scratch guitar on most of it mm. Quick, yeah. So that's got to be a pretty cool experience then, I guess, right? Coming in, recording an album in three days, not knowing what it sounds like when you're playing it, and then a couple of days later here, oh, oh shit. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what's crazy about this, you know? It's like, you go and create this thing like this, and it lasts forever. Yeah. Um, and it's good, it doesn't sound like, and it isn't necessarily just this fucking... Uh, let's just get it out there. Of course. Um, what he, what Bjorn does right, it comes from the deepest part of his fucking inflamed soul. So, um, yeah, I'm hyped on what it turned out to be. You know, especially for me, I was just like hanging on by a thread mentally. I, I was running out of shit. I was barely sleeping because my mind couldn't turn off. Uh, Pepe is following up their question, says, one, best in Flames drummer, seen them seven times since 2001. He's talking about you, my friend. Um, and then wants to know what your favorite drummers are. Or who your favorite drummers are, I guess. First of all, thank you. Um, 
man, all over the place. Yeah. My favorite drummers aren't really metal guys. I mean, my favorite drummer right now is probably Eloy Casa Grande. He, um, he plays for Sepultura. Mm. Um, I have a couple buddies helping me right now with becoming a better drummer. Matt Halpern from Periphery. Um, uh, uh, Alex Alex Rudinger, who plays he's played with Whitechapel and a bunch of people. Um, and then um, who else is helping me? All the help right now. Did you have like Charlie a... from? Oh, Charlie go ahead. from Five Finger Death Punch has been helping me. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's saying? fine. I, I was just, I was trying to sneak one in before we got to the answer. I was just gonna say, did you have a? Were you one of those? You, you started or music at an early age. Started drumming at nine. Did you have one of those like first early heroes that you're like, I have to listen to all of this person's records, demos, tapes, lessons, all of that stuff? Oh yeah, favorite drummer. Um, yeah, Travis Barker. I mean, for the age. You know, I was in the perfect age of like, of Blink, and, and I live in San Diego. Blink mm. is from here, so it was like this obtainable or this somewhat obtainable goal in front of me, quite literally. You know, and I got to meet Travis and talk to him for hours when I was 15, yeah. 14, and like I, I would see the guys crossing the street in my neighborhood, and like um, they did the record at one of my friends' house. They did the. Um, self-titled record at one of my friends houses oh, like just having that there is like insane insanely inspiring but my favorite drummer is travis barker um will champion from coldplay which is random um again the three dudes that i listed that are have been helping me absolutely insane drummers and these days there's so many internet drummers and there's just so much more to see now um darren king who played with meat map um Aaron Gillespie was a huge influence. Uh, yeah, all over the place, man. As long as you hit hard and look like you're having fun, you're probably going to be one of my favorite drummers. Hell yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think that's a great point, too, is like getting able to, able to talk to one of your heroes or just Travis Barker at 15. Like, you remember that however many years half yeah. your life later you will remember that for the rest of your life and even just those small little things that established drummers do to the next generation or people that really look up to them it's so important man it really really is and how insane i mean i'll talk to fans whenever they want to chat I'm, as weird as it can be i i try to express that i'm normal as fuck you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like, I, i'm not anything to like you know, idolize or hold on a pedestal, let's say, more importantly. So I'll talk to fans, like, any any day, come up to me, whatever, let's kick it. But for Travis Barker to sit there and with a 15-year-old and, and my buddy who's, like, 16, like, to sit there and talk to us for, like, two hours, what the fuck? Like, right. there's a million different things you probably should have been doing during that, <laughs> like, having dinner with supermodels or, like, <laughs> but you're just talking to me outside, dude? Like, that was insane. Yeah. So Sam was probably... Crazy normal you know what i'm saying it's like just another normal thing and hey you'll beat him but have you seen him since yeah yeah uh maybe once or twice and then like he's commented on a couple of my videos yeah. so that kind of shit just i'll i'm a forever that's insane that kind of stuff <laughs> that kind of stuff will never be normal to me right comes full circle yeah Uh, okay, Tanner, wrong answer only. Why B flat minor? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's try another one. Wrong if answer D, only. If, if D minor is the saddest of all keys, B flat minor is... The, the, the most angry? I don't fucking know. All right. I don't... <laughs> I'm the least music geek, but I love where your head's at. Yeah, let's try and... What do you think, everybody, in, in, in the chat? If D minor is the saddest of all keys, this is a Spinal Tap reference for those of you not old enough to get it. Uh, what is B flat minor? Let's I've go. Wrong, seen, an um, wrong answers only. I've never seen never seen Spinal Tap. Oh, really? You should have a good uh, movie weekend this week. It'll be fun. True. I love this song, too. This yeah. Is my 
second favorite. Big fan of when the bass gets to shine for a little bit, you know? It's great tone right there. So yeah, he wrote this song the night before I recorded it at about 10 or 11 p.m. And um, there's a drum solo in the bridge, um, which is cool too, because I don't know if there's an Inflame song that has a drum solo in it. I don't, I don't know. Um, but he, I was about to go to bed. I was just trying to chill, and he's like, "Yo, I, I want you to do a drum solo on this song." And I'm like, "Fuck!" <laughs> My head, just mush, bro. Like, fuck. I wrote the whole drum solo on my computer in fear that I wouldn't be creative enough the next morning because um, I go in at like 10 a.m. You know, I was like, I don't. My brain doesn't work like that in the morning. Yeah. And I ended up, I ended up doing what I wrote on my computer. Crazy. Do you ever, so when you look back at this now, knowing how kind of fast everything went, how fried you were, and like all the work leading up to it, do you look back at this and be like, holy shit, I pushed myself and I'm like so proud of what I can do and I kind of can't believe what came out the other side? Like, how do, how do you feel yeah. when you have this pressure cooker situation and you're all in your head about it and wondering if you're ever going to get through it and then you're on the other side listening to this piece? Honestly, I've never really had the pleasure or the luxury of having time with any gig I've ever had in my entire life. Since I was 17, since my first gig, that first gig I joined, wait, let's let's soak this drum solo up real quick. Yeah, please, let's do it. I'll turn it up. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, the first gig I had, I joined on Friday and we started to on Monday. Um, the gig after that, same kind of shit. When I, when I played for Amir, I had a week notice. When I played for Trash Talk, I had a week notice. When I joined in flames i had a week notice to learn 27 songs Jesus everything oh my god everything has been last fucking minute my whole career so like this is kind of just goes along along with it you know so do you not have anxiety or you're really good about getting over your anxiety and like pushing through it <laughs> like that just gets no, me I got, thinking about it i have like i have like three different therapists i'm on full off for the past five years i meditate every morning i ice bath when i can I fucking do breath work. I'm a fucking anxious little fucking guy. Fuck yeah, I, I can see why, man. Like your whole entire life, you're just like, hey, you got a week to do this whole thing. Oh my God, all right. Oh man, but I'm glad that you're like, you, you're also taking care of yourself and like get, doing that part of it. Cause like the mental aspect of that is so, so important as well. Oh yeah, I wouldn't, I w unless I did something, I, I wouldn't be here. I'd be fucking working I'd be an Amazon driver or something, you know? I feel, oh, dude, I feel it. Yeah. All right, so we are at the end of the transmission, my friends. Like what I just did there? Let's go. This is end of the transmission, last song of Foregone, my friends. I feel like I've heard a couple of times, and I'll have to go back and listen to it. Uh, 
as I always do, I never like listening to albums just once, right? You have to do it a couple of times, in my opinion, to really soak everything in. So I've heard like a little bit of uh, like subtle slipknot scratches here and there layered under some of these songs and stuff like that. Look at that kitty. No, no way. Oh, He's yeah, look at that. that. Look at him. Hey, as <laughs> JPEX, yeah. Tell Jay that we say hi. I will. That's so funny. He, it's like he knew. He could feel it. <laughs> oh, I like that. Choose your side, there are no winners, hell is overcrowded, and heaven's full of sinners. I really like that line. Really like that yep. line. Endless vibrato right there. Some say you can still hear that vibrato to this day. There are a lot of really standout guitar riffs on this one too. Mm -hmm. The 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 one during um, Sinosier that like uh, previews and goes after the drum solo in that the that's like a bouncy riff. Thought really really good stuff all the way around. There Thank it is, know. everybody. It is. We we did it. We did, we did it. it. We listened to the whole thing. Go us, everybody. That was Forgone by In Flames. Out now. Make sure you listen to it. Pick it up. Go do the thing. Uh, so, Tanner, I ask at the end of every album, I always ask every artist this. There is no right answer. There may not even be an actual answer, but I'll ask it for you anyway. Uh, what do you want people to take away from this album after they listen to it? Be a better person. Um, mm. Be the fucking person you know, you'd want your child to be, you know, fucking mm. just be a fucking good dude. Enjoy it. My whole thing that I've been just trying to press without giving a fuck to press it. Cause it's each person shit is just fucking like what you like. Mm. Go listen to this record. If you don't like it, you don't need to fucking go and right. tell the internet. We don't <laughs> give a shit. So not even about that either. I don't look at any of that shit. Lucky for me, no one comes to my page with hate. It's all yeah. love, you know? So I just want people to understand that everything is, a, you know, our not only is our human experience such a fucking blip in time, why not spend that blip in time fucking enjoying what you love, fucking listen to whatever the fuck you want, because today, other than this record, I'm going to go listen to Paramore. I'm going to go listen to Pierce the Veil. I am a music lover. I'm going to go listen to fucking this chick that I just found that's probably fucking huge uh ray r-a-y-e like i like what you like man who gives a shit eat whatever food you want watch whatever fucking movie you want go listen to whatever the fuck you want be a good person love your fucking neighbor and just chill the fuck out man just enjoy again you know nice yeah i got you yeah let's fucking go yeah preach yeah, man like that's yeah great. i like that speech <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people no, do but that seriously, I, I hate, you know, I, I see people spending a lot of energy 
um, on what they don't like and what sucks and this, that, and this without realizing how much energy they're wasting on shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm going to spend this whole weekend celebrating the record. I'm going to spend this whole weekend smoking a fuck ton of weed and fucking playing Harry Potter. Like, have fun, man. Life is fucking short, dude. Hell yeah. I well like, I, I can't, we can't follow that up with anything. Can right. You? Right. You can't I'll say look, anything you know, after that. You, you, you really can't follow it. It's just, yo, do what you do. Like, stop hating. Like, just stop hating. Like, it's like what you like. That's what it's all about. No, yeah, what you really like, is. man. It's, it's all back. objective. Just fucking enjoy your shit. Don't be a dick to anybody about it. Just fucking like what you like, man. Spend more time liking what you like and not telling people what you don't fuck with. That's mm. it. Spend more time supporting the things that you love, not shitting on the things that you hate. Boy, exactly. I've never seen. Hey, listen, this this is gonna be plastered in every every single video. <laughs> it's it's in the Bible. <laughs> 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 fuck yes all right well i think that we're gonna leave it there keem any last words yeah. no 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 i'm not following up after yeah that. Oh, <laughs> smart the last word Keem. i'm not following up after that are you see you just right. gave this you just gave the, you just gave the word <laughs> he was preaching he was spit <laughs> how was what was to say after that what he said <laughs> <laughs> all right everybody hey next week february 17th we're gonna be right back here for first listen we're gonna be listening to hell ripper we're gonna have jamie mcbain uh black and speed metal from scotland one man project it's gonna be great we're gonna hail the goat and uh bang our heads next week came so tanner thank you so much for taking time out of your day out of your weekend to come and hang with us and listen to the record congratulations for such an incredible record and for getting this stuff out there and i hope that uh we can see you on the road and that you guys have a blast and are safe and all that good shit man i appreciate it guys yeah hit me up on instagram let's get you guys out to a show so we can actually meet and um sure. keem will have you we'll have you open the show with like a live reaction show Bro, like 30 minutes you. you'll just react to shit on stage i got you, I got you. <laughs> i'll do that i got you <laughs> hell, hell yeah boys i appreciate it fuck yes all right everybody for tanner wayne for hardcore keem i'm john garcia stay heavy headbang